We're about to listen to the new MGMT album. This is significant for a few reasons. One, it's their first album in six years. Two, they only have five albums. Three, they're beloved. However, they've gone through many ebbs and flows. I mean, the first album has three massive hits. The second album is a departure. It's kind of like an artsy prog rock album. The third album is like a, a sleep at the wheel. Who are we? The fourth album is a return to form back to like the hipster pop we all know and love, but like kind of more my taste. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the now here's the new album. So we're going to see where this lands in their career trajectory because it's very unpredictable with them. Yes, I sing perfect meter, which will last to the end of the world. I like this so far. Spaceship David Bowie reference. Yeah. You know what I mean? A little bit of space oddity going on. Oh, this is the intro track. The whole track's like this. Mm -hmm. The narration's also giving me that uh, philosopher that likes to talk about psychedelics and God. I like this intro track. I think it's a cool way to introduce an album. Bottoms? Alan Watts. Alan Watts. Got it, yeah. That's sure. what I was talking about. The narration also reminds me of Alan Watts. How do you feel about this intro track? <clears throat> so I liked it at the beginning, but it's a little long. Come on, they're doing things. This is not what I expected at all for track two. This almost sounds like a country song. Nice. This is nice. It's very CSMY. It's very Our House to me. I was thinking, yeah, it's like a Graham Nash track. It's a, it's a Graham Nash deja vu track. <laughs> I'm not sure what this album is communicating yet, considering the first track to this one. Do you know what I mean? Like stylistically? Mm -hmm. The song's kind of generic and bland. It's very bland. I'm kind of confused. I'm also confused, like I said, what did the first track have to do with the second track? Where's the cohesion? None. Unless we're just like fuzzy, spacey stoner music. That's, I guess that's we'll the only connection. Like, so far, I would never listen to this song again. It's good. I just don't. I don't feel anything about it. It's fine. It's good. I'd give it... I'd even, uh... I don't feel anything. You don't feel anything? No. I feel something. I just don't feel a lot. It just feels like... It's a little generic. It just feels like everybody else. Yeah. I'm like, okay. You've got your Graham Nash vibe. You got maybe an Elliot Smith vibe. You got a just guitar folky. I don't know. It's just. I like the little pan flute in the background. That was cute. Mm. Or the slide flute or whatever it was. Yeah, it was nice. Maybe it was like a recorder. It was cool to add something else in there. I like the background recorder. Yeah, it was like they added pepper on my salad. I like that. Dancing in Babylon featuring Christi Christine and the Queens is the. Next track. This is so generic. It's not even good Stevie Nicks Fleetwood Mac vibes right now. Right? At least give me Silver Springs, baby. Oh, this is okay. Now, now you're giving me some spice. You like that sound design, but I don't. Now, now we're going somewhere. This is now going up for me because of this this section. It's still not for me. This part's generic. I'm just never gonna get drunk and sing this in my life. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and as as I've been quoted before, if I can't fuck or get fucked up to it, it's not doing anything emotionally for me. Still another minute and a half of this song. What? They are not making music for the zebra children. This is such millennial. This is, this is such a millennial uh, pop album. This is like. Uh, is this is for millennials that actually like music taste has gotten worse as they've aged. Do you know what that's called? What? Alt Nation. That's what that whole radio channel is. It's you, like you liked alternative rock in the '90s, then you became a yuppie and you, you didn't develop your music taste. And so now you'll so. you'll really let some real. Bullshit. basic shit pass 
Yeah. You're like, I like this. It's like third rate killers. That yeah. whole station. What do you give this track? I gave it a six. That's a fucking five, man. I gotta say, this album is a snooze fest. This is so boring. It's true. I like the fretless bass. But everything around it, why? Holy shit. This song is five and a half minutes. Okay, this is not for zebra children. The zebra children are gonerville. They stopped caring. So are MGMT just doubling down on their generation without caring about no. um, not being relevant? They don't need to be. Aesthetically anymore? They oh. don't have to. We're Me. only halfway through this fucker. That's too... Don't tell me that. The, this part's cool. I like all the synth... It's pretty. ...sound design in this part. Okay. A couple oh, bongos. Wait. Give me a couple bongos. What are we, Kill, we on a, are hits. we on acid now? I like it. I'd like it to be more that way. So yeah, but it's like not. But then it just doesn't stick. It's like all the passages that are a little warped and psychedelic. They're like, eh, just just twenty seconds of that. There's a little bit. Then back to like the bland, kind of folksy, kind of country. Well, they're trying to make an out. They're trying to make a product. That's for damn sure. This is a product. This part's cool. All right, I'm giving this song a six. Yeah. I'm writing hard at a six right now. What are you at for this track? I'm thinking. That solo is like the most diet RC Prince solo I've ever heard in my life. This is a five. You're at a five, eh? Yeah. Okay. Big this is fan. fucking boring. I feel like... This album reads to me as their uh, another ebb, like another like where are what are we doing? It's like on off on off. You know what I mean? Uh, to me, this album is just not on. This I'm waiting for the hit, right? Like, where's the single off this album? This is one of them. We've already heard two of the three singles. Then the next song is the next single, I guess. Just based on streams. I guess I like this better. Look at those numbers in like, uh, how long has this album been out? A week or two? Yeah. I think I kind of like this one. Or maybe it's it's the one I'm supposed to like more. Yeah, that's fair. Does that, that makes sense? Because it's saltini. It's your saltine rock desires. Yeah, it's fulfilled. almost, he's almost Ty Segaling me. It's almost Seagull Rock. He's, but, but with he's more not. lush synths. But he's not actually giving it to me garagey enough or like psych enough. This is my favorite track actually though. But the reason why I like it is because he's giving me bootleg Ty Seagull. The guitar is like that vibe too, you know? This one would probably get a replay from me. This is a seven for me. I like this harpsichord part. Yeah, the harpsichord's sick. It's also giving me like T-Rex vibes. Oh, absolutely, big time. I love T-Rex. Not so, not so much for me. No. That's I where our, that's that. where our tastes diverge. Yeah, it really does actually. Wow, we kind of yeah. split at the MC5 T-Rex juncture. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Stooges too. Yeah. Throw like, Stooges in that pile. Yeah, you're like, ooh, I don't really care for those guys, and no. I'm like, oh my god, that is rock and roll, baby. You give this song a seven, right? Yeah, I give this one a seven. This is my highest rating so far of the album. <laughs> this is the most fucking. Stuck in the millennial era album uh, ever. I hope by the time I hit 40, I do not lame out like this. I want to keep wow. collaborating with Zebra Children, and I want I want to keep being inspired by what the youth are into and stay cutting edge. I don't care if I age out. I just want to do whatever I'm doing right. I care about aging out. I actually care. This song is just completely mediocre, boring, average. Middle of the road. Oh. I was really hoping they were going to push shit forward on this record and do something a little deeper with electronics. This is regression. This feels like a regression. Much like the third album felt like a regression. But um, I know that there are people on Rate Your Music who feel differently. So. Oh, you know, the re I know in my heart right now that we're saying what we're saying and there's like a big swath of people that are like, you're disagree. wrong. Yeah. This is fantastic. I love what it. What do you give that uh, track? A five? A passive five. Oh, a slow jam on track seven after so many long songs? 
What a tedious fucking record. I'm never making. Okay, if I here. Okay, here's here's the deal. Okay, I kind of like this. If I make, I don't. If I make a record with long songs, it's only going to be a few songs. Okay. If it's going to be a, a lot of songs, then they're going to be short for the most part. Maybe I'll throw a couple, one or two longies in there. But that's my general feeling on the matter. This is kind of bland, actually. This music did just make me actively dissociate a little bit. I was you were you were talking. The music was happening. I was listening to your conversation, but this, my eyeballs. Yeah. I went somewhere else. This just sounds like a Cure, like a '90s Cure song. Not. Yeah, I guess. This is 1995 Cure. I lift you up and I drown. You know what I mean? Yeah. I could cry. <laughs> yep. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Nothing changes. The producer was like, try not to sound exactly like Robert Smith. He was like, no, no, I really wrote this song like that, though. <laughs> it's like Wishing me, I could cry. It's like me writing a song and being like, don't make it sound like Morrissey. Don't make it sound like Chino. And I'm like... All I got for you is Morrissey and Chino over here, kid. I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> this part, squawking like right before. Squawking. I fall to pieces one at a time. Everyone knows I'm broken inside. I'm so sad. Yet. Oh, here we are. Oh. Oh no 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 no! Don't you don't get to go to, you don't get to go Lost Boys on us. That's what's happening now, Lost Boys on you. Yeah. This part's cool, but it's because I like that DX7 keyboard sound. I want more of that, and I like. I like this. Like, I like this. Sax yeah, this noodle like. Uh, vibe. This is, the noodle vibe is pretty This song will get a 6 for me purely because it did a noodle Like I like this noodle right here This is like an acid jazz bridge or something so Like that, I would sample this and put it in a hip hop song This is what we came back to? This like multi-part business Like we left that cool jazzy part to come back to this This is okay, I actually don't mind this Okay, I'll give this track a 6 To 6 I like the... The jangly stuff. The, I love a sparkle. Yeah, the crystals. Crystals banging up against one another. I, I like, like that, that we're like that. we're in like the frosty. It's frosty. It's woo. It's frosty cowboy time. This is good. This is good this so is far. This is good. This might get another seven from me. Okay, Devendra Banhart. Right? Yeah. Isn't a little, this... A little bit. Isn't this bad... Uh, or not, oh, I won't it's say not bad. bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. But I was gonna say bad animal collective, like bad just, old animal. Collective. I just feel like the the leaning into acoustic guitar stuff on this record is not doing them any favors. I actually find the more they lean away from that, the more I like them. Which is not to say that I dislike acoustic guitars or acoustic music. I just don't like their take on it and how they're implementing it into their sound with the electronic textures and such. You hear the Animal Affair? Collective vibe, though, right? When Animal to... Collective go acoustic, yes. Yeah, like this is like a purple canoe vibes. It is soft and it is dry. But I would fall for it if a soft boy whispers saying this to me. You know, I'm still susceptible. I'm only human, Beekman. I'm only human. But it is soft and dry. Is this album soft as Charmin? Yeah, it's disintegrating as it touched my butthole. Oh, I like this. I like the phaser. I do like what's happening right here. I love a good meta fl flanger on a on a anything. This is nice. I think I give this song a six and a half. It's soft and dry, but I like my men that way, and I will give it a seven. <laughs> <laughs> I already I already know what I'm giving this record. It's pretty obvious. Still I think I'm going to end up with a six. I mean, it's obvious it's a six out of ten. I can describe this as like a meditative experience. 
right? I would say this is their second weakest album in their discography. All right, this album is definitely. Is it done? This is the last. It's this is six out of ten. How much more of this track, though? I don't want to be like. We're gonna f- just let's. We're gonna finish. Of it. course it is, but Let, I want to know how much. We'll just say your rating. By the time you're done talking, it's done. Oh, this is cute. I like this little outro. Hit us with your rating. Six five. Six five out of ten. I don't know. That's really generous. Oh, I guess you did like it a little better than I did, though. So that makes sense. There's things that I find likable about it. Would you feel more comfortable giving it a six three? Yeah, I think I would feel better about life if I gave it a six point three. This is kind of cool, though. The ending's kind of cool. Well, it circles back to the beginning, the the space oddity shit. Yeah, but the first part, I I did not like the intro. Because this is Loss of Life Part 1. The intro is Loss of Life Part 2. Much like uh, Sgt. Pepper's reprise, even though that's later in the album. I yawned a lot through this album. Literally. Not even just like a... Like, I found it boring. Like, I, I was... Okay, this is too much. You know what? This I said six point three. Outro, bro. I said six point three. They need to tighten that shit up. There's still two and a half PS- minutes of this fucker. Oh my god, they're getting a six then. You can't do that. So you just demoted the whole record to a six because of how long the outro is? Yes, it's taking too fucking long. Wrap All this right, shit Jake, the fuck you throw up. a six point zero on both of our faces. Oh my now. god, six point zero. You fucked it up for me, man. I'm sticking with my. Like, uh, let me go. My gut. Let me go. My gut skis. Oh, and I don't like this either. That's very millennial whoop. So millennial. So Alt Nation. This to me is like the edgiest thing they'll play on Alt Nation. Man. I have something mean to say. Me too. This is second rate Flaming Lips. <gasps> wow. What's your thing? I lost it. I just... It had it was it was something not nice about aging. Like I, I don't want to age like this. That's you know, what I'm saying. I, when I'm 40, I don't want to age like not this. Like this. That's I don't want to. Wanna, yeah, I don't want to go happened, out like this. It happened to, to Beck. It happened to uh, William Corgan. It's happened to a lot of people, man. I don't want to go out like this. I don't want to go out like this. Yeah, I had. I was like having that that moment in my head where I was like, damn. Do you know that, who, that do live you, fast, die young thing would have been pretty tight. Do you know who's not going to go out like this? Who? Johnny Greenwood and Tom York. Okay. They're still releasing quality material well into their 50s. 